What is going on? It is Alex coming back at you with another video. And today we're going to be doing our weekly review of CBS's brand new 2024 NFL mock draft. If you are new, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do that on YouTube jazz below my face is my board below that is going to be a running ticker of all the ways to get involved in the community as well as take advantage of our two sponsors underdog fantasy as well as only pop. Let's get into this. Let's have fun. I'm going to be working today from 3 p.m. through 2 a.m. So pray for me. Happy New Year. Love y'all. But yes, I'm doing this actually right before I go to work. So got to do a little bit more of a speed run here. But we do love being able to have some fun talking about some balls. So starting off with the first overall selection, the Bears go Caleb Williams. You know, Justin Fields, incredible player. The real question is, do you think that you know, with, you know, probably one more year, a spectacular play, will it be worth running the risk of, you know, him either doing poorly, having to get a new quarterback or doing really well, have to pay $50 million a year. That's the true outcomes that come out of this. I respect the opinions of those who go Caleb Williams at number one overall. I would not shame it if you can find a good landing spot for Justin, because I think based on how well Justin's been playing, it's only right by this franchise to end up sending him there. Uh, to somewhere that he could actually succeed. So, you know, for me, it's Caleb or Marvin, and there's not really much else apart from a trade out that would be enticing at one. I pick two, the, I mean, the Arizona Cardinals go Marvin Harrison Jr. It's the classic one, two. So, uh, Caleb Williams to the Bears at one, Marvin to the Cardinals at two. I pick three, Washington goes Drake May. I don't think he's the second best quarterback in the class. I think that's Jaden Daniels. Hot take. Maybe some people think that Jane Daniels is the best quarterback in the class. That's way more of a hot take, in my opinion. But it is what it is. Uh, Drake May, you know, he does have that huge high upside. Don't think that a UNC quarterback who, in my opinion, graded out worse than Sam Howell, even though, to be fair, my grading system's been changing quite a bit. So uh, things would have probably definitely changed with Sam. But regardless, you know, Drake May, not necessarily as spectacular, I think, as people say he is. I still think Washington could go after a quarterback, but if they're not going to go after Jaden Daniels at this point, I'd say either trade back and get a tackle or just stay here and get a tackle. Uh, You just got to do what's best for your team, and I don't think that Drake May is going to be that marginal of an upgrade. Uh, Things may change, of course. The more tape I watch, the more my opinions either solidify or change on a quarterback or any player for that matter. And I mean, it's pretty damn logical, right? So again, everything is TBD. But based on the tape that I have seen, uh, not over the moon about Mr. May. Uh, Pick number four, the New England Patriots go Joe Alt. I do think this is a potential possibility. I do think that Bailey Zappi is a solid quarterback, but I do also believe that Jaden Daniels should be in consideration for that selection. At pick number five, the New York Giants go Dallas Turner. So we're back to uh, this bullshit pick because we've seen plenty of Brian's uh, mock drafts, but I mean, again, Dallas Turner for the value based on my board. It makes sense. He's my number four player in the class. But I just doubt that Dallas Turner has the wins above replacement value that maybe a wide receiver would have. Of course, like if you get to have another solid ass wide receiver in round number two, let's just say Xavier Leggett falls. um, This wouldn't look actually that bad because I do think they do need an edge two. Like it's not out of the realm of possibility, but I would just say, you know, it's, uh, it's a little wishful. And I thought he was 242 pounds, not 252. That number might be incorrect. I pick number six, Brock Bowers goes to the Los Angeles Chargers. I think this is a perfectly fine selection. Works well with Kellen Moore, who also loves his tight ends. Uh, get Justin Herbert as much help as possible. I pick number seven, the Tennessee Titans go Olu Fashanyu. It You know, go with the best left tackle. It's not a very hard formula to follow, so especially with Will Levis apparently going down with an injury today on his ankle. You just want to make sure he stays healthy. He's a great quarterback. He's the quarterback of the future. You might as well end up having the best line for uh, your future quarterback. The Chicago Bears also end up nabbing Malik Neighbors at pick eight. This would probably be very, very, very optimistic if they can end up getting Malik here because of the fact that he probably should have went to the Giants. But uh, that aside... Malik Neighbors, Caleb Williams, that would be a very solid way to start off this draft. I think that would be, in my opinion, the best if you can somehow fetch some really good draft capital there for Justin Fields. Again, I've heard, you know, there's some teams that are definitely interested in if Fields ends off the year hot and there's maybe some new management that comes in over the top because Eberflus has done a great job in his respective role in terms of fixing the defense. Maybe you get some new offensive coordinating in there. 
maybe they do want to change things up a little bit. And I love Justin for who he is. Again, I'm a Justin fan, but this honestly would be a really good outcome. Really good outcome. At pick number nine, the New York Jets go J.C. Latham, right tackle out of Alabama. You know, just really good size, really good mobility, tons of upside here. He might have a little bit of a rocky start because he honestly wasn't that good last year, but he's improved leaps and bounds this year. Big fan of that. Big fan of what I uh, see when players end up actually working on themselves over the offseason and getting better. At pick number 10, Jaden Daniels goes to Atlanta. I think this is going to be great for my thumbnail. So I already know that's going in there. Woo woo. And uh, this would be an excellent selection. I know Atlanta is definitely in the market for Justin Fields. This would be as good of a pick as getting Justin Fields maybe with the second round pick. At pick number 11, the Saints go Laotu Latu. I do think edge rusher is a position they could target. They like the freaky ath- athletic edge rushers. It does fit what they're looking for. And, you know, personally, I think they could trade back, try to get some extra draft capital because they could end up getting an extra safety, an extra edge rusher, an extra defensive interior. And they don't necessarily have a billion picks to make that happen because I'm pretty sure their third round pick went to New Orleans or (laughs) funnily enough, uh, it went to Seattle. So funny for me to say New Orleans when we're talking about them. Leotu Latu, tons of potential, though. Not going to blame him. I would prefer to go after a tackle like Amarius Mims does, uh, or like Amarius Mims, who goes to Green Bay Packers here at pick 12. He actually ended up declaring today. I've been really confident, like 90 to 95% confident that he would return because genuinely I thought he'd be a top five selection in, if not top three, in 2025. But he decided to come out, probably he's hearing top 15 hype, and it's like, you know what? Is it really worth it to potentially get injured and, you know, have even worse potential next year? You know, it is what it is. He decided to come out. He's back on the board. He's my number 16 player at the moment. Most likely will be continuing to rise because you all know how I feel about offensive tackles. Uh, Green Bay would not be doing the wrong thing by going on Marius Mims at this point. I know that Rashid Walker's in a very fine job. I like Zach Tom a lot. But ultimately, Marius Mims is an upgrade over both. And I loved Zach Tom. Amarius Mims is the future. I also, Rasheed Walker will be coming up on a contract in the near years. So Amarius Mims also a much more viable contract in terms of his overall uh, cap hit in the future. So I think they could use a lot more in terms of defensive secondary. Like that would be probably the best pick. But Amarius Mims, I would not get mad at that if that were you. Uh, pick number 13, the Las Vegas Raiders go JJ McCarthy. He did not play well enough this year in order to earn a top 13 selection. You know, those big games, he ended up not really performing statistically that incredibly. And, you know, for me, he's a top 64 player. I would be willing to reach on him at the end of the first round. Absolutely. But at pick 13, that is a bona fide starter. You know, Justin Fields went at pick number 11, you know, Mac Jones, who like was essentially a su- extremely dominant there at Bama, ended up being a top 15 pick in that same draft. So I don't really understand why we think J.J. McCarthy will be worth the top 13 pick. Tons of upside, but he's essentially an upgraded Desmond Ritter. So it is what it is. Of course, if they have him ranked at 21, it makes sense. At pick 14, Nate Wiggins goes to the Denver Broncos. I feel like Nate Wiggins doesn't comp very well to Patrick Sertan. I would like to see a little bit more man coverage ability and a little bit more press, um, press aptitude. And I don't think that you really get that with Nate Wiggins. His speciality is in multiple different forms of zone coverage. His field instincts are incredible, but naturally I don't trust him in man-to-man coverage at all or in press coverage. He's just a little too light for me. Uh, I do think he's a great corner, but I would just say pipe down a little bit on that. At pick number 15, we got Jared Verse going to the... Minnesota Vikings, I think this is an excellent selection. If you bring back Neil Hunter, that might be the best edge rushing duo in the NFL. Ridiculous upside with an amazing player. At pick 16, the Arizona Cardinals go Kool-Aid McKinstry. Uh, this is as good of a pick as you can probably ask for at pick 16. You know, you could talk about a right tackle here, kick Paris Johnson to left, DJ Humphreys get out. Like, definitely very possible there. But uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry, you can't get too mad at being able to get a superstar corner there because this team does need to fix the defense a lot. At pick 17, the Steelers go to Lise Fawaga. This is his standard pick for us. Uh, but you know what? I'm not going to complain. He is my right. He's my offensive tackle number two, tied number one because he's my right tackle number one. There you go. At pick number 18, the Bengals go Romo Dunze. 
This is, you know, the Brett Coleman special. This would be a great pick for him. Uh, potentially, if you lose T. Higgins, Rome can play that role. If you lose Tyler Boyd, I'd be perfectly fine putting Rome in the slot and filling that role as well. There's a lot of great opportunities that you can have for having um, Rome on the squad. I don't think that you'd be too pissy if you ended up getting a superstar like Romo Dunze. I'd prefer to go after a defensive interior here like Jerzon Johnny Newton. And somebody tried to say that he doesn't go by the name Johnny, but it literally is his name on Twitter. Like, it's a quick look up. So um, that's funny. So do your own thing, bro. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Romo Dunze would be a great choice. I would prefer Newton as well. At pick number 19, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers go Terry and Arnold. I don't think corners, the spot that's going to be the biggest wins above replacement position for this team. They have a ton of guys that they have. And, you know, I want to see Zion McCollum end up being a superstar eventually because that guy I thought was the steal of the draft, as well as many other people did as well. So, uh, Darian Arnold still my number one corner in the draft pick. He's my number eight spot. Not going to get mad at it because it's good value. But I do believe maybe you could target a wide receiver there. Uh, you could probably even target an offensive tackle. I would be looking at a right tackle, honestly. But, you know, still very solid. At pick number 20, Jerzon Johnny Newton ends up going to the Indianapolis Colts. I'd prefer a little bit of meat like Tervandre Sweat over Johnny, even though Jerzon ends up being like way higher on my board. He's actually 20 spots higher on my board, respectively. But I want a potential future nose tackle who has a ton of upside rather than Jerzon Newton, who's sub 300, who would be definitely stuck into a DeForest Buckner role or uh, with, you know, where Grover Stewart was. So uh, defense material, definitely a need. It's a solid value. I would go after Keon Coleman here, but it's to me, Keon Coleman or else you could end up. I mean, it's not a bad pick. Like, don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a good pick, but um, there's some guys I would prefer. At pick 21, the Seahawks go JT to Malau, high upside edge rusher out of the Ohio State University. You know, solid overall position in terms of edge, but there's just way better edge rushers on the board. JT is a solid edge rusher. I was defending him during the year when he kept slipping out of the second round. It was like, pause. Just because he didn't end up being like the next best thing since sliced bread doesn't mean he's ass. He actually improved. So good for JT. Uh, but Seahawks, eh, I think you get better value with a different edge rusher there. At pick number 22, this is my dream pick for Jacksonville. They go key on Coleman to get their true X number one receiver. Uh, people are saying that he can't separate. He never could. Don't know why people are surprised by something he never did. It's just y'all got excited about a new shiny toy who could be a really good jump ball and have some good after the catch ability. And that's what he's always done really well. To be honest, I am a little bit disappointed in the fact Keon didn't take a bigger step this year uh, in terms of his route running nuance as well as his release package. It is a little bit of a bummer because Johnny Wilson, that's kind of his speciality. So unfortunate, but still a great player. Don't overthink it. At pick number 23, the Rams go Cooper to Gene. Uh, fantastic player. He's going to be super duper versatile. So I'm not going to be shaming any team that goes after Cooper to Gene, unless it's, you know, egregiously bad in terms of the value. Like maybe there's, you know, who knows? You could end up seeing Jaden Daniels for a team that's quarterback needy and they go Cooper to Gene. That's where maybe I get mad. But Cooper is going to be a great addition in terms of special teams, in terms of defense, even potentially offense as well. At pick number 24, you got Quinion Mitchell going to the Buffalo Bills. It's a weird pick I could definitely see happening, but I'm not there yet with Quinion. Need to see more tape. That's a TBD. I would prefer to go maybe after one of the safeties. Of course, Cooper DeGene's the dream pick for this team. Uh, you know, there's a wide receiver. You could go a Mecca Buka who is used to playing in the snow. Like he's really good at it too. That'd be where I would go. But uh, defensive back's not an actual, actually bad position to target. The Chiefs then go a Mecca Buka. I've even traded up with the Chiefs to get him as a phenomenal player. Uh, again, this is an example of prospect fatigue. He's just been super consistent, and people don't like consistency. It's kind of weird. It's the opposite of the American taste for food. People prefer consistency over like that, over the craziness, over the peaks and valleys. And uh, and when it comes to food, that's why fast food is so popular. You know exactly what you're getting. In terms of prospects, you'd rather take the super high and low rather than the guys who you just know are going to work because it's kind of boring, you know, the, and it's, that's fair, but you know, you don't play football for it to be really exciting. You play to be good at football. Like I'm not, I'm not going to be in the mood to 
you know, be on my toes to see if a player works. We know Emeka is going to work. He's a great player. He's just super consistent. Prospect fatigue, man. This guy deserves to be a top 20 player. And he is at number 20 on my board and on their board. So I'm glad to see that. But a lot of people just stop talking about Emeka like he's, you know, just some random wide receiver too. Like he's better than Brian Thomas. And I don't know why people think that Brian Thomas is like significantly better than Emeka. Uh, it is what it is, though. Tyler Newbin then goes to the Dallas Cowboys. This is a standard pick from Brian. I feel like there's just a lot more variation that you can go with for the Cowboys to where you don't need to be going safety for the Cowboys every time. Uh, for some teams, I get it. Like There's usually one really good position, like the Steelers' right tackle. Once you kick, Bra- um, not Braxton, but Broderick to left, makes sense. But, you know... For the Cowboys, they do need a left tackle of the future. They need a center of the future. Like They're going to be probably going offensive line round one. It's the Dallas Cowboys thing to do when their offensive line begins to crumble. At pick number 27, Chop Robinson goes to the Houston Texans. I know that I have some pushback here from some Texans fans, and I'd prefer Chop Robinson or Tavondre Sweat over probably any other player on the board. You know, Chop needs some mentorship, and I would love to see Will Anderson just be able to mold a supremely high ceiling athlete here in Chop Robinson. I'm a fan of it. I know some of y'all aren't, but I do think that Tavondre Sweat would be a great choice as well. At pick 28, the Detroit Lions go back to Ohio State to go get Denzel Burke. Uh, I love Denzel. He's phenomenal. I don't know why people hate him. Again, prospect fatigue maybe because people were talking about Denzel earlier. Maybe people just don't like Ohio State players. To be fair, the offense lost him their bowl game. So... Don't know what to say about that. Their defense is a great, and Denzel Burke is a key part of it. Great player overall. At pick 29, Graham Barton goes to the Miami Dolphins. They need interior offensive line. Three dudes up for contract. All of them, I think, were the starters. So the entire interior of the offensive line is getting gutted. Graham Barton is going to be an elite addition anywhere, and that is going to be a huge plus, especially as long as you go down the board and Let's just say Jackson Powers Johnson falls to where you are and you're like, you know what? We wanted Graham to be our center, but why not get two elite interior offensive linemen? You know, like we're, maybe you're in the fifth round and Zach Frazier's in there. Like you can end up choosing the best interior offensive lineman available because then Graham can fit somewhere else and still play at a very high level. I like that versatility, add some extra value to him. Jordan Morgan then goes to the Philadelphia Eagles, a super high upside athlete and You know, he is certainly somebody who I do believe can be the future at right tackle for the Eagles. I'd prefer to go after someone who is a native right tackle like Kingsley Suamatea, but I'm not going to complain about Jordan Morgan. Would I like Braylon Trice maybe a little bit more? Would I end up liking, you know, Dwight McLaughlin eventually a little bit more? Um, You know, Kalen King a little bit more? Sure. But ultimately, tackle is one of those positions that we're going to all say, oh, it's a year too early. And we're going to be like, damn, it was a good thing they drafted him a year too early. So I do think tackle is a great spot to go. Of course, Kingsley Suamatea falls to the Niners, which makes total sense because that's the perfect pick for them. So uh, good job for the 49ers there. Then Troy Fautanu ends off the draft by going to the Baltimore Ravens. He can play interior and he can also sub in at tackle. I think this is a phenomenal move. So that's going to be the video. Uh, some boring picks in there, but at the same time, it was nice to see some new faces in new places. So thank you so much for watching, showing the love as always. Happy New Year. See you on the far side.